Hello fellow problem solvers. So today we're going to be doing one of my favorite problems of all time. This number theory problem from Vietnam in 2001, I believe, the team selection test. Amazingly beautiful problem. I love this problem. And I've been, I've, today I've been shooting a bunch of videos and I've shot a lot of problems which are introductory in some competitions. And I decided, hey, let me shoot a big, big, cool problem today that I really love that's a bit more on the more difficult side, on the more creative side, or should I say. This problem, I invite you to try out for a minimum of half an hour, ideally an hour and a half to two hours, but not more than four hours. If on the other hand you'd like to go along with us, you know, give it a go for the next 20 minutes, put your first ideas out on paper. And I'll say this about the problem, you legitimately don't need that much theory for this. And when I say don't need that much theory for this, I mean to say you would need, you don't, you just don't need much. You just legitimately do not need much uh, at all. This is a problem where you need really, really little. And I can't tell you what you need because then you would be able to, that would be too much of a hint. Uh, but safe to say, if you can, do well in a junior level competition. If you can solve the JBML 2013, 2013, I think, actually no, 2015, uh, or 2014, 2014 or 2015, if you can solve these like junior Balkan math Olympiads in general, then you have, I believe, all the theory necessary to solve this problem. Yeah, I think that's so. If you are comfortable with junior level math Olympiads, you're comfortable with this problem, theory wise. And because it's just so creative, that's why I love it. So without further ado now, let's begin. So this is what the problem is really about. We have a zero is given and then the other members of the sequence just satisfy this relationship. We need to prove AX divides AY for infinitely many X and Y. So uh, positive integers. Now, let's first take a big picture of you with this problem. And let me ask you this. Take five minutes and think to yourself, what is enough for us to prove? The answer here is, given a zero was said to be any sort of int any positive integer, it wasn't specified like oh it's one. It's a zero is given, which means it can be anything. It can be one. It can be a million, a billion, a trillion, whatever. A trillion and two maybe, but it can be anything that we want. And this means that, like, what does it mean that we don't have infinitely many pairs of x and y? Think of the contrary. And actually think for two to three minutes, pause and think, what does it mean for the contrary that we don't have infinitely many pairs of X and Y? Well, what that means is that starting from some, another one way of putting it is if the sequence is A1, AN, like, then there's like some other numbers, and say that the, all the pairs of X and Y we have, that for every such pair, those X and Y are both smaller than this n, right? This like big capital N. What that means is that the sequence starting from here doesn't have any pairs ax and ay such so that ax divides a, ay. So, but now think of this. If such a sequence existed, right? We could set a0 to be equal to an, and then we would have zero x and y, zero pairs of x and y. And what that tells you is actually, think for two minutes, what does that tell you? And here's what it tells you. It tells you that it is enough to prove that you have one pair of X and Y. If you can prove you have one pair of X and Y, no matter what the initial like A0 is, then you've effectively proved you have infinitely many X and Y. I think that's pretty cool. So that just like constrains our search for what we're going to be doing. We're going to prove there's only one pair of the X and the Y. It's not a simple problem just yet. But I invite you now to pause for another 10 to 20 minutes and think about what does it mean? Like when we keep picking these numbers, think of the number line. And we have, I don't know where it was zero or one is, but say we have A zero picked. And then we cannot go every 
this is 2 times a0, 3 times a0, we can't pick any of these, right? And then we pick, say, a1. And then we can't pick any of these, right? a1, this is 3a1, 4a1, and so on and so forth. But what is sort of happening here? What is enough for us to prove the contrary? Think 10 to 20 minutes and think of that. And here's the next step. Okay, so we have our numbers, you know, a1, a2, a3. And what would sort of necessitate that we're done? Well, we would necessitate that we're done if there's like some interval of length 2001 such that every number in the interval is a multiple of some other number that was previously found, right? That would be enough. So, okay, can we show, can it be any interval? Can we maybe construct it? Well, trying to construct that interval, which is sort of like a natural thing to think about doing is, looks difficult. It looks very hard to keep track of. Because what do you need to know? Like how big are A0, A1, A2? Which one is it going to be? It seems like a difficult task. However, what do we also know about? What do we know about this sequence? We know that if we take any interval of 2001 integers, consecutive integers, we'll have a member, one number in that interval will be a member of our sequence. So now maybe it makes sense to think of different interval, intervals of length 2001. And maybe there is some relationship that we can think about between intervals. And starting at any point 10, just think about intervals of length 2001. Can we create any relationship with them? So these are numbers, say, this is number a, a plus 1, actually, yeah, a, a plus 1, all the way till a plus 2000. And this is b, b plus 1 all the way till b plus 2000. We haven't yet decided what a or b is, but maybe let's, you know, let's fix a. And we can fix a. And what b should we choose that can have some interesting relationship between the two intervals? And this is where your creativity comes in. Here I invite you to pause for 20 to 40 minutes and think about what could you do? Mind you, this is our goal at the end of the day. Have a number here, divide a number here. Is there anything interesting you can do with these two intervals? Take those 20 to 40 minutes, however much you want. I invite you at least 20 and play around. Use your imagination now. And here's the next step. So what I love about the problem is this fact right now. So. If you want there to be some sort of, you know, I pick the fix A and I want to get a B that's bigger than it. That will sort of like give me some sort of certainty about the sequence, right? And the best certainty I have is if A divides B, A plus 1 divides B plus 1, A plus 2000 divides B plus 2000, and so on and so forth. So we have a plus i divides b plus i. In other words, a plus i divides b minus a. In other words, we can put b is equal to a plus a times a plus 1 times a plus 2000. And now what does this give us? If I pick a number, if I have the same i, you know, for, if I'll pick an a, Right, I'll pick say a plus a thousand will be in in my sequence. Now the question is, if b plus the thousand is in my sequence, I'm done, right? The first is like, it's not a big issue that I'm done then. But say it doesn't. Say I get b plus one. Well then, for b, I can create a c such that b divides c b plus 1 divides c plus 1. I'll just set c equal to b plus b times b plus 1, 
b plus 2,000. And then I have c is equal to this. You know, c is equal to the same thing b is. So if I get c is equal to, if I get c, is, if I get c plus 1 in the sequence, I'm done. But it's not only that. If I get c plus 1,000, then I know because a plus 1,000 divides b plus 1,000, and b plus 1,000 divides c plus 1,000, that means that a plus 1,000 divides c plus 1,000. And that just about, that's what I need. Now mind you, I have a, any number, I'm not done. I have b. If it's one, this one number, I am definitely done. It could be done in other cases, but if it's this one number, I'm done. And then for c, if it's one of these two numbers, c plus 1 or c plus 1,000, I'm done. And then if I create a d, like I say d is equal to uh, c, plus, c plus c times c plus 1 times c plus all the way till c, all the way till times c plus 2,000, then I will get that d. I, I can't have d plus 1, d plus 1,000, and then say you know, we had c plus 167. Now I can't have d equal to 167. I can't have it. I can't have d plus 167, nor d plus 1, nor d plus 1,000 be in the sequence. Like, can you see the wheel reach a contradiction here? And this is why I absolutely love that pro this problem. It's absolutely beautiful to me. This sort of like construction. A way to write it down formally would be. Yeah, let's look at the. I would actually write this down for me. Oh, yeah, I'd say like, let's look at a sequence z n, where z where we have z zero is equal to say a zero. Doesn't matter which one, and z n is equal to z n minus one plus z n minus one times z n minus one plus one, all the way till z n minus one plus. 2000. Then we have zi plus j divides zi plus k plus j for all i, j, k that are in the uh, natural numbers. And actually, not just natural numbers, but like non negative integers. So for all z greater than or equal to 0, yeah, k as well. Then we have this is true. And now we know that uh, for every, now we know that what? We know that we will have some i, we'll have some, let's call it i, how do I say this? i would be, we'll have a i be equal, we'll have an a i that's equal to every one of, like z plus, we'll have, among the numbers zt, zt plus 1, all the way till z, actually zt plus 1, all the way till zt plus 2000, one of these numbers will be a member of the sequence. And if you just take 2002, 2003, doesn't matter, take 4000 consecutive zn's, Z0 through Z4000. And then we'll have that for two of them, we will have that the same J for Zi and Zi plus K. For the same J, we have that it's a member of this other this sequence of A1 through A0 through An. And then we know that for those two members of the sequence, they divide each other. That finishes up the problem. It's absolutely, it's a, this is a beautiful problem. I really invite you to, you know, pause a bit, you know, take it in. This is beauty. This is what I find absolutely beautiful about compatible mathematics. This type of problem. Like just, because it, it's, it's very scary when you look at it. Like this was, I think, the sixth on the Vietnamese team selection test 2001. It's a difficult problem. But the solution is just, what? You're just using, literally, you're just using the pigeonhole principle here. I mean, even that is an overstatement. You're not even using that. You're using 
some basic divisibility here. You're literally just being creative with the problem. Sure, there are ways that you could maybe look at some distribution where these numbers fall among these different boxes. Um, I think there's a term for that called density. I don't know that. Um, and I'm sure you can, there are advanced techniques, but what's beautiful about the problem, what's beautiful about compatible mathematics types of problems is when you have a problem like this, which has, sure, some very convoluted, like some very advanced solution, but it also has a beautiful, simple solution, which is just one or two ideas which are absolutely beautiful. This solves our lovely problem, and as always, Thanks for problem solving.